solo boat launch. See if I can make this. You know, it's the, the feeling when you get on your boat and you realize that you forgot your keys. So now you gotta make the leap back. All right, try this again. This is solo boat launching 101, or rather how not to. Woo, what's happening everybody? Uh, this is crazy. So I'm out here, I'm fishing by myself, doing a little solo dolo fishing action, and I'm gonna take y'all along with me on this uh, crazy fishing adventure because this is the most crowded I have ever seen my inshore fishing waters. Check this out, y'all. It's crazy. Let's see, how many boats can we count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, so there's 29 boats just in this one area. This is insane. This is just like a, pretty much like a 500 square yard little area. And I'm dodging boats like running through a minefield right here. So. Anyways, y'all, today I uh, figured I would take y'all along uh, for a little fishing excursion. I wish I could do a YouTube live right now, but I don't really have those capabilities on my boat. So I'm just gonna be bringing y'all along with me on this uh, little fishing excursion on a nice Saturday, trying to weave through all of these people because this, this is just crazy. All right, people, first lure. Gonna start with that quarter ounce Creole. Y'all know what it is. All right, y'all, so what I'm doing right now is literally just finding where people are not fishing. That's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, this time of year, our speckled trout, they move into our inlets, and we actually have like two classes of speckled trout. We have like a residential class of speckled trout in Virginia, North Carolina, and then we have a migratory class of speckled trout. The migratory class of speckled trout is really cool. They're like, typically, they can be the ones of bigger size, um, I mean, not to say the residential fish can be big too, but the migratory ones, they move in from North Carolina, Noose River, Moorhead, up from like Moorhead City, Noose River, and um, just kind of that neck of the woods. So it's, speckled trout fishing is really cool up here in the mid-Atlantic, and um, right now everything's kind of starting to pop off, so these migratory fish are just moving into all of our inlets, and they are littered, they could be anywhere. There we go. There's a fish. All right, y'all, that's a real one. I'm on a real trout. Come in here. Let's see if I can boat flip them. Try and hide them from everybody. Come here. Come here. All right, there we go. Worst boat flip ever, but we'll take it. That's a nice one. It's probably like an 18 incher. This bank is just loaded. This is this is what you do when there's a lot of people. You gotta hide your fish. Otherwise, they'll come right up on you and start casting all over you. You feel like you're like a savage like bird or something. That's it, y'all. Just this Creole croaker. Getting it done. Oh, there we go. All right, y'all. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Dang. Tighten my drag. Get out of the anchor line. Get out of the anchor line. Come in here. All right, y'all, I'm on a good one. Big weak fish. Come here. All right, people. That is a keeper weak fish right there. Great trout. Sorry if I'm being a little quiet, but just trying to keep this fish on the DL. There we go. 
All right, y'all. On another fish, just out here in the middle. Let's see what we got. Feels like a flounder. If that's a flounder. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, definitely. So my battery just died, but I just picked up my first flounder of the year. Check this out. That's what I'm talking about right there, people. First flounder of the year. That's a solid 18 inch flounder that's definitely coming home for dinner. I'm just slow rolling my soft plastics, you know, across these wide open areas. And like I said, these fish, flounder, trout, and a lot of these like migratory fish, they come in and they're just hungry. This guy's actually like throwing up like chunks of like small bait and everything. That's some survival food right there. No, like tie your boat up and just hang out in the back of the boat. We could still social distance. All right. Uh, give me a second. Here, I'm gonna tie this right here. All right, y'all, so, so far, um, let's see, I've caught five fish, three keepers, and have a little slam going on. Uh, actually, my own version of a slam. Trout, weak fish, and flounder. So that's only thing that I need right now is a slot size red. But yeah, I've got my buddy Brett right here, and Brett actually runs the VBIF, right? Yep. Virginia Beach Inshore Fishing, and it's a Facebook page. It's really cool. It's in Virginia Beach, and um, so anyways, Brett and I saw him out on the yak, so we're just kind of social distancing on my boat. Anyways, you guys check that Facebook page out. It's really cool. Uh, if you guys are in the Virginia Beach, mid-Atlantic area, then it's just kind of helps y'all you know, kind of see what's going on in this area, good fishing reports and everything, VBIF. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna just keep on keeping on, see if we can just catch more of these uh, mid-spring speckled trout and redfish. That's the goal. How you doing? All right, here we go, it's time to catch some more fish. Uh, oh, here we go. This is something. Feels like a red. Definitely fighting like a red. And it's a red. It sure is. You freaking monster, dude. Please be a keeper. Blue tail, man. That's 18, Brett. That's yeah. a keeper. It's gotta be. Another one? Oh yeah, that's a good one, son. Really good one. That's a red. That's a really good red. That's a really good fish. Or it's a giant trout. All right, y'all, I'm on a real fish right here. Is this a trout? If this is a trout, I'm gonna freak. No, it's a red. Just a good size red. Definitely a school of them. go all right y'all i'm only gonna harvest one redfish so we're gonna let this guy go all right see you later buddy this is the one that we're gonna harvest that's a really good size red probably 20 some inches that's a good stringer right there you're good man you're good Everybody's so uptight today. <laughs> Z-Man. Z-Man. Z-Man, yeah. Looks like a little minnow. We're catching trout, drum, flounder, everything. They're everywhere, dude. Yeah, that's right. There's one. I got one. Got another fish. Dang, what is this? It's like a shad. That's a, 
No, I think it's a shad. That's a trout. Uh, yeah. You're good. You can net it with that. Thank you. And a marilover in there. Look at that. Dang, that's a nice size there. trout. That's a nice trout. Now everybody on the club is coming out and trying to fish our spot, but that's fine. We'll just keep fishing, keep catching. I ain't gonna get all worked up. I know, there's one, there's one. All right, people, I'm on a good one. That feels like a nice sized trout. All right, y'all, definitely a good sized trout. Come here. Let go. Look at that, he's like chomping down. Let go. Give him a bait back. Thank you. Survival food, people. What do y'all got, bass assassins? Yeah, those will work. The little paddle tail with the quarter ounce jig head. Let it sit to the bottom and you can like slow retrieve or like kind of bounce it a little bit. They'll, they'll hit anything. I'm fishing green right now, but they'll hit anything. I see what y'all got, yeah. All right, y'all, that right there is a rat. I caught every species today except for striper. We caught shad. Weak fish, redfish, trout, flounder, everything. So anyways, y'all, that right there, that wraps up. Whew, that was an amazing day of fishing right there. So that goes to show, even if there's a lot of crowds out, that's totally fine. Crowds, wind, weather, rain, just get out there, go catch yourself some fish. That right there, that is a day of success. Boom. So we got redfish, flounder, Nice size trout, weak fish. All right, people, it's time for us to get out of the water. I'll see y'all in the kitchen. We gonna cook these fish up. All right, you guys ready for this? We're actually flying in the back of my truck. This is getting really legit. All right, people, so <laughs> my solo mission paid off. You guys, this is a cooler of success. Actually, I guess it wasn't officially solo because Brett ended up coming out with me, but you guys, we ended up slaying it. So, Chicken beast. <laughs> and then my favorite. Nice. Mr. Flounder decided to show up to the party. Get it, babe. Okay. Oh, wait, we're not good. Y'all, that is a cooler of success if I ever saw one. I'm a little jealous go. I didn't go out fishing with you, but that's, that's it. That's dinner for a few nights, that's for yep. sure. What were you doing, Christy? I was visiting my niece, who is a year and a half. Thank you. She is adorable. Okay, that's fine. Acceptable. <laughs> Love this fish. All right, so I don't know how y'all fillet your flounder, but this is how I do mine. So I make one cut right here, just like that. And then I do one right down the middle, right down the spine, like so. From here, I actually like to open up the filet from the middle and out. All right, y'all, this right here, love this meat. Flounder is definitely one of the best tasting one of the best tasting fish for sure All right people so that right there dag gone. That's a beautiful looking flounder fillet Then once I get the second one, it's pretty dang easy because you can open up the back so you can open up the other side of the fillet right here mm -hmm. Everybody's got their own style of filleting flounder and some people they have a way where they can fillet a flounder in say like 10 seconds. That's cool and everything, but I like to, cool. but I like to take my time and make sure that I really maximize all the meat I can get off the fish. I'm not here for a race. Another beautiful fillet. That's a perfectly filleted flounder right there. All right, people. So right here, flounder fillets. Beautiful flounder fillets. We're gonna do something good with these. Y'all just wait.
All right, so here we are. We're back in the kitchen. Filleted everything. Just got done filleting the redfish, trout, flounder, a weak fish, and I'm in the kitchen. And I'm trying to make something amazing tonight out of the fish. And I don't know about y'all, but you know, we've been doing like delivery for groceries. Don't have as much options, I guess, as we would normally have for cooking our fish. So I figured I would want to do like an experiment, but also like a challenge. So I guess we can call this like the quarantine refrigerator stock fishing cooking challenge. I don't know. I'm really hungry. Can't really think right now, but you guys get the idea. So let's see what we get. We have special sauce, burger sauce. That looks decent. What else do we have? Buffalo sauce, nah. Spicy brown mustard. What is the expiration? Best by November 29th, 2019. Okay, probably not gonna use that one. Queso, no. We do not need queso. Chipotle aioli, that'll work. I forgot, I do have sour cream. Probably need that. Okay, I think I can make something work. I just got a really good idea. All right, let me put the camera on the truck. Okay, so I cut these fillets in half. So we have redfish right here, and then we have our flounder fillets. Now, let's turn the camera. Okay, so now we have our pan right here, and we are gonna need some olive oil. First thing we're gonna do, take the cooking spray, spray it down, super easy. Now, we've got our redfish, let's do on the bottom. So redfish, and then we're gonna season that. And just a little bit of garlic, not too much. About that much. We are going to take the chipotle aioli. Okay, that smells good. Squeeze a little bit on there. And I'm just gonna take my knife and just kind of butter it up, like butter in the biscuit. These are redfish fillets. So the next thing we're gonna do, let's take some sour cream. Not too much, just a little bit. We want a little bit of cream in between these. So that'll do the trick. Okay, now for the fun part. So we're gonna take our flounder and let's put that right there on top. So I got redfish on the bottom, flounder on top. Yeah, that's right. We just went next level with this. We're gonna go pretty heavy on the garlic on this round. Okay, check this out. I found some breadcrumbs and we're just gonna put some, just a little bit on there. There we go. Last but not least, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil just to give it a little bit of flavor, some texture. Boom, going in the oven. Let's see what this thing turns out like. You know, sometimes quarantine, you just gotta make it fun. Do a little experiment. We're gonna wait about 10 to 12 minutes and see what this thing looks like. This could be a total bust or it could be amazing. I think this actually is gonna be pretty amazing. Let's see if it's done. Oh yeah, she's done. There it is. All right, hang tight one second. There it is. That is amazing. I don't know what I'm gonna call these things. Redfish, flounder, aioli sandwiches. That is just absolutely dripping with flavor. All right, people, one more look at that right there, and that's it. I'm about to get down on this fish. This is so good, and I got my chocolate milk out of my wine glass. Why? I don't know why, because it's the quarantine, and that's just what I'm craving right now, and that's just what I wanna do. So anyways, y'all, hope y'all are doing well during the quarantine. I'm gonna eat the rest of this fish, and I'll see y'all later. Cheers. Deuces.